It's nine months to the U.S. presidential elections and the candidates face their first major test in a few hours. The Iowa caucus is the starting gun for the race to the White House. Going into the caucus, Democrat Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump are leading the polls in their respective nomination races. This is the moment when Iowa takes center stage in American politics. For weeks now, the people in this uh, state have had their candidates crisscrossing uh, the state, campaigning at town halls, diners, uh, bowling alleys and schools. Now it's their turn to choose their preferred candidate, the first state to do so. Iowa is a predominantly rural farming state with a population of just 3 million. Its influence, to, uh, though, it's, uh, th though is disproportionate, its influence, uh, though, is dispro disproportionate to its size. Iowa doesn't get to pick the nominees, but it has veto power. And coming first in the nation means all candidates want to win here. Clinton is facing a fierce challenge from a 74-year-old senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders, whilst uh, Republican Jeb Bush, once seen as a favorite, seems to be in the shadow of billionaire property developer Donald Trump. Polls show that uh, Trump is in a tight battle with Ted Cruz that could hinge on a turnout and a large block of undecided voters. Joining us now from Iowa is our correspondent Nick Harper. A very good evening to you, Nick. What's the mood like in Iowa today, just a few hours before the vote? Well, the excitement is certainly building. We have to remember that it's been building, really, for weeks and for months. We've had candidates in this state for a very long time, getting out and about, meeting all of these potential voters, shaking hands, kissing the babies, doing all of that to win over as many people as possible. Now we're into the final few hours, and we've still got rallies and campaign events going on. Throughout the weekend, we saw the main candidates holding some very large-scale events. Today, on Monday, it's slightly on a smaller scale, smaller town hall meetings, smaller, more private gatherings, but all really trying to push uh, for that final vote to get as many people as possible to caucus for the individual candidates. Now, Nick, here in South Africa, the excitement and the interest is peaking around the U.S. presidential uh, race. We hear the terms primaries and caucus very often. Just briefly tell us, talk us through what it means and what the process is about. Yes, it's quite a complex code process, but simply put, every single state in the United States gets a chance to say which candidate they prefer the most. So each 50 states get their say ahead of the election in November, still another nine months away. And during that process, it whittles down the candidates. At the moment, it's still a large field. We've got three Democrats and about a dozen Republicans. They will be whittled down until each party has one nominee each. So this is the very first time that any state gets to have their say. It's Iowa's turn. They're first in the nation. They hold a caucus. For the Democrats, that means that we have small events, small private gatherings, sometimes taking place in people's houses. And at these gatherings, people quite literally vote with their feet. They walk into different corners of the room to show which candidate they prefer. The Republicans here in Iowa do it slightly differently in perhaps a more traditional version, having a secret ballot. And that's what happens at primaries. The next next one, the, the next state that gets to have its say will be New Hampshire. They have a primary, as do many of the states. So primaries and caucuses, when you add them all up together, gets you to a point where you have two candidates, one from each party, vying for that position in the White House. Nick, who's leading the opinion polls right now? Well, really, it's down to four candidates, two on either side. Let's take the Democrats first of all. Hillary Clinton is just about holding on to a lead against Bernie Sanders. In the latest poll that came out over the weekend, she had a three-point lead. Now, throughout, Hillary Clinton has really been thought of as the person that would get the presidential nomination for the Democrats. But Bernie Sanders, this 70-year-old uh, Vermont senator, has very much come up hot on her heels, gathering a lot of support from a really broad base, not just older generations, but a lot of millennial voters as well. Now, the Republican side, it is down to two candidates as well. We've got Donald Trump leading the race by about five points ahead of Ted Cruz, the billionaire businessman doing very well. But Ted Cruz does have more support in this state in particular from the evangelical Christians, and that could sway it for Cruz over Trump here in Iowa. What could happen after tonight's vote for the candidates? 
Well, it really is a winnowing down process. So the candidates who finish near the bottom, and there's a big Republican pack still of about 12 candidates, the ones that finish near the bottom may simply decide that this is their moment to drop out. They've tried as hard as they can, but this first indication has shown that they are really not that popular amongst the voters. So some candidates, this may be the end of their race. They will, however, move on to the next state. The ones that have done well will target New Hampshire. Some candidates are already there. Jeb Bush, for example, he this evening is not in Iowa. He is in New Hampshire already trying to rally support there, effectively suggesting that he feels there's no way for him to win here in Iowa, that he's done as much as he can and now wants to get as much support as he can in New Hampshire, the next state. So, Nick, there's still many months until the election in November. What happens between now and then? Well, it really is this whittling down process, getting it to a point where we just have one candidate from both sides, one Democrat and one Republican, and they then slug it out. So the next three, four, five months, that is the primary caucus season where all of the states get their say. Then in July, the two parties have a week-long convention where they effectively get all of the party members together and officially announce who is going to be their candidate. Now, in years past, for the last 30 years or so, by the time the convention rolls around in the summer, we already know who the candidates for both sides will be. However, this year it may be interesting. The Republican field is still so muddled that we may get to the convention and still not know who will be chosen. And then it's a few more months of campaigning, the debates between the two main candidates, the big race to the White House, which all ends in the election for the whole of the country on November the 8th. Nick, we've been hearing that Iowa is key in the final election, but they haven't predicted a presidential nominee winner for some time, have they? No, that's right. If you look at recent history, they haven't done that well in choosing the person that then goes on to win the White House. Uh, the big example, the, the big exception to that rule is in 2008, though. In 2008, Iowans correctly chose Barack Obama. At that time, again, the thinking was that perhaps Hillary Clinton, who then was running for president as well, would win Iowa. But there was this late break by Barack Obama. This uh, uh, candidate who really came out of nowhere took people by surprise. He won Iowa and that momentum propelled him forward. At that time Hillary Clinton came third and that really set the tone for her, her campaign and she didn't recover from there on out. Four years ago when Mitt Romney, Romney the Republican, uh, became the nominee but here in Iowa he didn't come top of the pile. It was Rick Santorum instead. So they don't always choose the winner but it is very much the starting gun for the whole election season and it is the one that the eyes of America and the world is watching. That was our correspondent, Nick Harper, coming to us live from Iowa.